So welcome, everybody. Welcome. You know, we're going to discuss this. Uh, we're going to discuss this whole thing. You know, with this summit again. At least we've seen the summit. And uh, what we want to do for you guys is basically, you know, uh, break down. You know exactly what is happening. You know, with this uh, this global education. You know, seminar. Because, uh, you know, guys, if anything, the reason why I'm putting this page up on the screen is for you all to see that when you read this, you know, uh, says 2018 2020 education sector plan uh, was appraised in July 2017. Who was in power 2017 and endorsed, you know, by uh, uh, and endorsed by the development partners in October of 2017. Who was in power 2017? The APC government. Government is continuity. That is why I want to point this out. Very important to you guys. Um, you folks are coming in. Welcome, everybody. Welcome, Aisata. Welcome, Kalitu. You know, uh, welcome, everybody. You know, um, yes, yes. Koko uh, Mutate. Hello, my brother. How are you? All right. So, of course, you know, we finish this, but we're going to discuss this thing in detail. We want to make sure go too long. Uh, we're already two minutes in, at least we have enough folks to get started. So first thing I'm going to do, Cashbox, um, let us play the speed walk, because this conversation has been going all over the place about this whole trip to the United Kingdom. The fundamental question that we have, of course, is who paid for this trip? That is the most important. Uh, we don't care if the president was invited, not invited, whatever the case may be, but who actually paid for this trip is the most important question that I think you know deserves an answer. And that is why we want to, you know, make sure that, uh, you know, uh, we have some answers. And the sad thing with this whole thing, and I'm going to tell you guys this, is because this government, you know, does not know how to, um, you know, communicate. And that is why we have the problems that we have. So when you look at this, of course, this is the president on boarding the flight, you know, um, from London. Um, it is a private flight, chartered flight. So who paid for this flight? Naram Mamina na Dove Courts, Naram Mamina Congo Market, um, na the British government, na one Lebanese man, na one investor, uh, who paid for this flight, we deserve to know. And that is what responsible governments do, right? So um, that is why we're posing this question. You know, that is what the conversation should be. It's about who financed this flight. I mean, hey, the mission might be all well and good, but who financed this flight? That is the fundamental question. You know, and, and, and for a government of President Bio, who does not communicate to his people? Because this is the whole thing. Something like this, if Cashbox was the president, I'm sure Cashbox would go out there before traveling, you know, uh, on an occasion like this. Before traveling, you would even give an interview to the radio station. I mean, this man has the radio stations to his advantage, everything. They, they just back to his call. He could go to the radio station and say, hey, Serenians, I'm leaving for, uh, you know, a conference in the United Kingdom. You know, the British government has invited me. This is the invitation. That is democracy. This is not a military dictatorship government. These are the points we try to make sure that we embed into these guys. That is what true governance means. It's about communicating with the people, letting every, everybody know what's going on, you know, keep everybody at rest. Don't just say, oh, no, I'm just going to let them wallow and let them think about this. I don't have to worry about them. I don't have to answer to them. That is not what governance is. And that is why the fundamental question that we have, guys, like I'm saying again, is who financed this trip? We don't care if the president was invited. Yes, we are happy Sierra Leone is represented at that summit. Because if anything, it's the flag of Sierra Leone that is flying high. We are excited about for that. But at the end of the day, let me you know, just make it clear that we deserve to know as a people. We deserve to know. But Kashmir, before I even put the video of the president, of his speech that he made at uh, you know, the GEP, the program, you know, do you want to say anything, first of all, before I even put that video up and then we'll conversate on that video? Um, yeah, thank you, um, Ibrahim. And um, just as you point out, Jishno, um, the crucial thing there, it is about, you know, politicians respecting the people. And, um, you know, the, the, the politicians, them just not respect the people. They just feel, say, you know what, I'm just going to do what I feel for do, um, answerable to anybody. Um, so, let me just do what I get for do. And it goes back to the fact that, you know, people, these politicians or the people that get for realize, say, that then they employ these guys and um, they suppose for 
hold them, you know, um, to, 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 to the fact that they need for answer to them. You know, when you did talk, say, um, who pays for this flight? I mean, who paid for this flight? And the fact that, you know, Nana Mami, we, they, they sell in patch granite, where they go pull 5,000 every morning, where they go, where they go now, you know, now markets for go selling patch granite, for go feeding, picking them. You know, these are some of the things that we, we get for um, people. Um, and before we go d like in detail into this whole thing, you know, Ibrahim, let's think about this. If I, I don't, I don't want to make we even put the British government Naya, into like the equation that they paid for this flight, because you and I know like the, the British Airways, we get the hundreds of flights them right now, we're grounded. Why? Because people are not using them. And like the, the, the British Airways, as they talk to you right now, they've been, they've been frowning at the government for not doing enough for help them. So can you imagine if it was the British government kind of like went to hire a private plane for somebody for visit the UK, how the British Airways will respond to the British government. So it doesn't make any sense. If like, if at all, maybe then for me use like British Airways, maybe I for me say, oh, Maybe not the British government now in pay for this flight. But and I tell you this, Ibrahim, not that I know for hundred percent for sure that it, it's not the Brit, but I know too well the way the British uh, works, there is no way they could have actually pulled their money for a government whether they pay for for go use for go use a, a private um, airline. It's not possible in the wildest dream, knowing how the British are. They've got hundreds of like grounded planes where they sit down, they didn't do nothing. If they be really want to pay for this. They could have used ask BA to pick our president up. So for saying the British government now pay for this, it is just rubbish and utter nonsense. Over to you, Ibrahim. Absolutely, it works, and thank you. You know, because we to set the, the conversation for folks. You know, we, we don't care about you know, oh no, no. What we care about is who paid for this flight. We are happy the president is representing Sierra Leone at this place. That is beautiful, that's fine, all well and good. But who paid for this flight? Why the president not, not, not just buy tickets for you, you know, all your family to have a good mini vacation? Why didn't you just, you know, get, get on board a commercial flight? You know, who paid for the flight? If it is the government of Sierra Leone, let us know it is the government of Sierra Leone. But again, this goes to you. This president is the most traveled president on the, on the face of planet Earth. And that is why it is sour that people in the say this president has traveled too much. And he's traveled too much. It's exorbitant. When you look at what is happening with the, the pains of the people. And this is about the Lincoln Queen College. The Lincoln King College. And that is why I'm going to present all of these guys because we can look at anyway, President, be able to talk. Because for us guys, these guys bluster and talk a lot. They did Schengen, all of that stuff. We want you guys, so you guys can see exactly what it is. These guys talk, but the talk does not match their actions. And that is why we want to expose these guys. Because if I, as one of those people that went, went after the ABC, went after the former government of President Koroma saying this and that, and we want change, we want this. This president Bill was all over the place tweeting, talking about, you know, um, the traveling expenditure is too much and this and that. We're coming to see him and his wife alone. I've spent more money traveling than some of the uh, MDAs and, and government buy. And all of these things are happening. So we want to present this program. We want you guys to see what is actually happening on the ground with all the funding. David Shenga is receiving over $150 million for education budgets. And that does not even include the wages of the salaries, uh, the wages of the teachers. That does not include wages. Because you and I, Cashbox, we thought that included wages. But let's go straight into it. Let's watch this video and then we'll analyze exactly, you know, what is it that we want to show you guys. So yeah, watch this. Thank you, Malala Ram, to turn to a discussion of changing the world. Uh, let me start, uh, President Bio, with you. Recently, Sierra Leone overturned a law so that pregnant girls will never again be banned from classrooms. How has this action changed the lives of girls in your country? And what are your plans for ensuring that girls have access to a quality education? Thank you very much. Um, I want to start off by saying that um, access to quality education is a fundamental human right. And I just wanted to say this, Gashbox, it's very minute and small, but the precedents to even acknowledge you know, the guests and everybody sitting around. In a conference like that, what you want to do is say, you know, thanks to Malala, thanks to Selena, thanks to Josephine. Thank you, you know, guys, for bringing me, giving me the opportunity to come here and, you know, talk to you guys about how important education is. That's, that's like the intro. But, of course, again, these are stressful situations, I can only imagine, you know. So, you know. And, and before, before you continue, and, and, and 
this is what we've been saying. I, I think we had a private conversation um, two days ago, or when the news broke about him coming to. Like the question we ask, you know, like when you see um, like Malala, this this not picking we a real example of how it is. Like you know, the depression, the, the suppression we go through, the pain. Is it Pakistan? Like you know, nearly got killed because you know of, for being educated and all these things. What is the, the example where we president for don't bring camp? Now, a real life situation where it bring camp a picking, where it pull from this situation and change in life. What do you do? Now, you don't pick him to go private school. Now, he face camp at the plane for making camp. So, what do you show for? Like, the, like in the time we say, two, I mean, con, I mean, man, don't stop this. Just, let's just continue. And then, like, because we go talk about the, the 2000 picking and where he said we don't get better, we go back to school. Absolutely. Some of the examples them, we want to see when it comes to like they kind of um, summits they are in conferences. Absolutely. Go ahead. All right. Let's, let's, let's see. Thank you, Malala Ann. To turn to a discussion of changing the world, uh, let me start, uh, President Bio, with you. Recently, Sierra Leone overturned a law so that pregnant girls will never again be banned from classrooms. How has this action changed the lives of girls in your country? And what are your plans for ensuring that girls have access to a quality education? Thank you very much. Um, I want to start off by saying that um, access to quality education is a fundamental human right. Besides, my government uh, has already stated that human capital development is our priority, but also we want to make sure that human capital development is actually inclusive. Having said that, I want to add that it is easier said than done, access to quality education. For women or girls in particular, there is, of course, uh, gender disparity, especially in the schools, and um, certain norms and discrimination have not allowed the girls to be able to continue to do their education. So we have to take care of that. And again, when you think about the number of girls who drop out of school, I thought that um, it would be a big failure on my part, who is very passionate about education, to leave any girl behind. So our policy is to make sure that all girls irrespective of the fact that they are pregnant or not, are able to continue school or go back to school after childbirth. It was for this reason that we brought in this new policy. What has they done? Well, of course, it, it, it's been difficult. We are trying to narrow the gender disparity uh, gap, especially for uh, pregnant girls. So we had to uh, bespoke this particular policy to make sure that uh, those gendered norms that militate against uh, pregnant school girls is taken care of. That is why we did this. And what has it done? Um, it has given confidence to girls not to be pregnant, but to know that when they are pregnant, they still have another chance. That's a huge number. In Sierra Leone, this year, uh, last year alone, from a school census, we had about over 2,000 2, girls who were registered pregnant. Uh, school girls, normally, all of them will fall out of school, drop out of school. But because of this policy, they have a chance to continue school. And uh, our policy is about making sure that they stay in school as long as possible and that they can return to school after childbirth. You know, um, on a lot of occasions, we have put the burden on the girls, little girls in their formative years. Uh, we look at them to be, um, what do I say, uh, sexual gatekeepers who would have to say no. That is victimization. We are being unreasonable victimize them and that is what this policy is about more guys are retained in the schools now um, uh, even with the parents starting with me I was vehemently opposed to it but on second thought and not wanting to go against my own uh, belief that everybody should have the opportunity to go to school 
I had to make a U-turn on that policy to allow pregnant girls to continue their education and to come back after. Okay. On that. Guess what? This is what I'm going to do now, right? For all these girls, first of all, when you hear that over 2,000 you know, girls get, got pregnant, what do you tell you? Prostitution is on the high rise. That is what is happening. Because why? Since these guys came to power, what, what did they do? Fired people at the, you know, the SL mining. All these big companies, they were you know, actually opportunities <laughs> for thousands of Sierra Leone. So a lot of families were left with where the girls had to actually go out now and fend for these families. Go along the beach, along the coastal lines. Most of these girls actually drop out from school because they cannot, what, what, they cannot even find food. How can they even think about going to school? Their families don't have what it takes to pay their school fees. And that is why you have a high rate of prostitution. And these SLPP, when you listen, you look at everything that is happening, all you have to go around about these SLPP folks, you know, being caught with other people's wives and all that stuff. But it tells you that because of what this government, the policies of this government, that is why we have a high rate of prostitution in the country. But let us do this. Guess what? You know, you know, let's for all the talk about protecting girls, all this talk about girls, 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 let me show the world what is actually happening in Sierra Leone. So you guys can see and make an evaluation for yourself. Guys, Malala, all of these people at the summit, we want you guys to see this. This is the reality of what is actually happening. Watch what they do, not what they say. With the SLPP, they talk a lot. President Bill talks a good game. David Schenger comes, talks a good game, right? What do they do? We have the evidence to back it up. So let me show you guys this. Thank you, Malala. And to turn to a discussion of changing the world. Uh I am a student of the Limco Queen University of Creative Technology Sierra Leone campus. One of my dreams was to become a telecoms engineer and a self entrepreneur. But today, I have become victim of circumstances and I happen to find myself at the quarry with my mom breaking stone. You know, this has been the job of my mom breaking stones, sending us to school. Till I got the opportunity to be one of the beneficiaries of Lincoln Queen University. I am a broadcasting and journalism student from the Lincoln Queen University of Creative Technology, Sierra Leone. I was opportunity to be one of the government schools of students at Lincoln Queen University. I'm a final year student at Lincoln Queen University. I came from a family of five. And I was the only one who was opportune with a university education. Since August, we closed classes for the third semester. The classes are not going on. It was almost three years since I left school. This is as a result of the present government has failed to honor the agreement they had with the university. And we as students have been lobbying all those of stakeholders to see that we resume classes. But it's been almost three years now since we've been lobbying, but our lobbying seems to be hopeless. Things have been tough. We find ourselves in a situation where we can never imagine. Of. There are thousands of others out there, like me. Some have engaged into activities that society will not be proud of. But I decide to come here at the Yams Farm Quarry to mine stones because I'm ashamed of what people are saying. I'm a bit disappointed. We normally say our hope is now hopeless because we don't have any hope to go back to school. Because the way things are right now, presently, we try all possible means. Some of us are even beaten. The first time we tried to reach the ministry, but um, that was in January 2019. But up till now, we are doing our best, and the doors are still locked. As of now, I'm a mother, presently, and also a petitioner at Telling Yams. On behalf of my college students, um, I would like to continue 
leading to this present government to see reasons as to why we should pay our services. First of all, we are CA Union, and I think we deserve that. And also, we've been pursuing this four-year policy for seven years now. It's no longer appealing, and we are trying to talk to this government. We are begging as CA Union, we are youth. And you know, the generation to go, we need to empower the youth. And Lincoln University is one of the technological universities in Syria that is here to give us that capacity to become somebody in the future. So we continue to plead on the government, the stakeholders, so everybody that is concerned, so they see reasons why they should be healthy. We deserve it. Because we are seeing this. We are begging, we are pleading. To those officials involved, people of concerns, to come to our head, to please see reasons as to why we must complete our cause. Our government, I beg me, they beg. I get too picking and uh, incomplete. Now they don't turn to us. For now, Pastor Pam Brookstone, and the boy picking can join me back for Brookstone. Yeah, Papa government, not all this way we want. We expect say that we will do something. After all, they don't then don't let them wait to do it on this week. But for now, no way, no, they will still anger. They are going to make it big. They are going to help people who are there for the education. Yeah, Papa government, that and they don't get through. We, the students of Limcockwin, are calling on all international donors to come to our aid and help us out. We are more than 1,000 students who are beneficiaries of this scholarship, but now our studies have been put on hold for far too long. All right, guys, you know, this is, this is the reality of what is actually happening. So why are we doing this? First of all, let me share with you guys because I want you to see that terribly. When you look at the educational objectives of a government, it is right here. These kids that are at Lincoln College, the government has a moral responsibility as prescribed by the Constitution. Of course, these are all lawsuits that are going to be filed eventually. E educational objectives. The government shall direct policy towards ensuring that there are equal rights and adequate uh, educational opportunities for all citizens at all levels by ensuring that every citizen is giving the opportunity to be educated to the best of his ability, aptitude and inclination by providing educational facilities at all levels and aspects of education such as primary, secondary, vocational, technical, college and university. Safeguarding the rights of vulnerable groups such as children, women, and the disadvantaged in, in security educational facilities, and providing the necessary structures, finance, and supporting facilities for education as and when practicable. This is the constitution, Cashbox. But talk to me, Cashbox. Create the uh, give me the synergy between Bio's talk and his what is happening on the ground. This is just one, right? I can show you more. Ex um, Ibrahim, you know, exactly, that's exactly where. You know, I've been the drive for goal. You know, first of all, every time I see this guy, the Brookstone with him, my, my heart breaks. My, you know, sometimes I just feel like, like crying because um, think of this, Ibrahim. I could have been in that position. You could have been in that position. A, a young man, just because of political mess, I know leader for make a good join in Mama Pambo. But you know, the point where our old Naya, now we president tell we say 2,000 girls, and I love what you, you, you said a few, few moments ago watch what they do, not what they say. It, you say 2,000 girls back to school after giving birth to kids. This, this video where you just play, two, one lady, the one with the hijab, tell we clearly say she's a mother and she's doing petty trading as well. Right. Trying to feed right. her child. Right. 
So is this girl, is this lady one of the, the girls that have actually been pregnant and then went back to school? You know, but sometimes the way these politicians treat we, I, I don't understand where we, we as people went wrong. Did we go wrong because we, we voted for them? Did we go wrong because we haven't asked them questions? We, we haven't kind of like held them to, to, you know, to say, you know what, tell us what you've done for us. Where have we gone wrong? For me, they see we, then they watch we koju ma koju right inside we yai. This girl, it's just, forget about the guy that was broken stones with, with his mom. Let's think about, because now this is talk about 2,000 girls. And first of all, Ibrahim, we need to go and drill down because then they tell we say it don't overturn a law. I don't know when, when me nobody ever know if it was a law to say when you get belly, when you born picky, you don't go back to school. I be on time. I see Boku Boku Tem. You know, I don't want to be playing the tribal card now, but we can always say, you know, people like in the talk say, oh, country ma um, 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 country ma like Creole because Creole, then they make their picking go picking good born Leicester, then they go back to school. So what do you mean there was law preventing kids um, girls from going back to school? I do not know whether it, like there was one. But the point now, yeah, like this this lady where they talk from Lincoln Queen, the one Fatima be your don't thief. And salon people and with a blind with eyes to these realities, they will tell you, say, oh, with a makeup story, the money where Fatima build on thief. It will pay for all the Lincoln Queen picking and they for the rest of the time, now Lincoln Queen. You know, Ibrahim sometimes, and we go go back to the GPE um, um summit and where it started and all, all that in the day. But how do these politicians sleep? Where did they think about how picking and they live their life? Sometimes it baffles me. You know, sometimes look at the now you they talk almost girl picking them. They amongst the Lincoln Queen picking here we go strike. Some of them were jailed. Some of them were not jailed. Some of them were in prison for coming out in protest to say, Papa government. Imagine they were begging the government for something were due to them. They were begging them, and yet they decide for all them and go lock some na Panema Road. If you remember, they lock some na Panema Road with um, Thomas More. So yeah. is it Thomas More? Yeah. The, 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 the civil um, the civil society activist, right? These things, but yet still, you they tell me when you listen to this guy. I, I, I think like towards the end of the, he, all he was trying to do was to market the hands of our girls, right? Uh, uh, wife trying to market that thing. Like, hands off our girls. People have been raped, but just because they're not there SLPP, you did not care about them. Show us the proof of these 2,000 girls when you tell we say they don't get belly and go back. And uh, just like what you rightly say. So, for tell you say 2,000 girls, imagine 2,000 girls. Then they, then they get, get belly and go back to school. What does that tell you? It's hardship. If you remember, one of the guys that would interview a quote with it is saying yeah, exactly. It says some have engaged in activities society society will not be proud of. Exactly. I tell you. It means some of these girls have gone into prostitution. Why? Because you know respect waiting due to them. The guy, the, this is not the young man, one of the young men they want to interview. It says some have and society will not will not be proud. The government fail for paid their school fees. This is the reason. So before you prevent it from happening, you want cure. Say, no, it is not my responsibility. It is your responsibility. You fail to look after them, but now you you, you when I go get belly, you are glad if you say, oh, you can't make money now in our people aid. You know, they use the oil for why we make money from the people them. They pick it, they, they poor people them that the country, then they kind of like go spend them and pick them. And an education system where you the president, you the education minister the the, the, the the ministers like around your government cannot send their kids but yet still you they tell me about like an education system we we're we supposed to be proud of and it's quality come on come on give me a break ibrahim absolutely and catch box you mentioned you know this uh protest let us show again the world when these students were actually protesting what they did to them like you mentioned you know our, our brother the civil society activist who is doing a film 